This is the only mention in Egyptian history, uh, inscriptions, or uh, any kind of documents of a seven-year famine. It's associated with Imhotep. Now, Moses, who had fled Egypt and who God said, go back in and bring my people out, Moses says, look, I haven't been there for 40 years. I can't, don't speak the language well anymore, and I'm a fugitive. Pharaoh would chop my head off. The slaves wouldn't listen to me. Who can I tell these people I represent so they'll listen? God says, tell them that I am has sent you. All right, Pharaoh had enough respect for this I am, whoever he was, mm -hmm. to allow Moses uh, to rattle his cage like nobody in history ever got their cage rattled. All those plagues, Pharaoh would have chopped his head off after the first one if he hadn't been afraid of this I am. Now, when Moses went in, he said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me. So this tells us who this I am was. Later, when Christ was talking to the Pharisees, Sadducees, the Essenes, the, the uh, Israelites of his day, they were ignoring him. He said that you believe that because you're descendants of Abraham, you don't need anything else. He said, before Abraham was, I am. They took up stones to stone him for claiming to be this God who they knew very well. So what has been the Egyptian response to this? Right? Well, the director of antiquities, a gentleman, Nasif Muhammad Hassan, who's the director of antiquities, as I said a second ago, has accepted this as the method used in the building of the pyramids. Everybody that has seen this accepts it. Now, there are holes around the base of the pyramid that exactly fit the uprights of these machines mm -hmm. that are built to size to handle the stones on the pyramid. So we're looking at reality here again. And uh, I don't know about everybody else. Of course, your audience has just got a quick look at this. It blows my mind uh, to see what actually took place back there. Well, it seems that God is using you to uh, maybe get to the mind of the skeptic and at least get their attention anyway. It says he uses the simple to confound the wise. So, so God has been using you really in a very incredible way, having found Noah's Ark and then the Red Sea discoveries of the Egyptian army and the horses, skeletons, and the uh, skeletons of humans as well, and the chariot wheels at the bottom of the, of the Red Sea. But more significant than anything, I would say, was your discovery of being an eyewitness of having found Noah's Ark itself. A modern day, I mean really, uh, in reality, an Indiana Jones sort of fellow. Yeah. Well, uh, probably the most significant thing that we have found to date is the Ark of the Covenant, John. And uh, we have a clip here that will show uh, a little bit, well, uh, of the area and that sort of thing associated with that. I believe we have a little clip on Yes, well, uh, I guess they're going to be rolled with a little clip okay. directly here. But uh, of all the things that we have found, now then, in our excavation, which we did by, by permission of the landowners and by the permission of the Israeli government, we have found cutouts in the wall of the cliff known as the Calvary Escarpment with cross holes right below it and with a plug in the cross hole where they reused it. Now, the Bible says near the crucifixion site there was a garden in the garden of tomb. And the Bible says that the seal of this tomb was a very great stone. The stone that you're looking at there was 13 feet 2 inches in diameter. And we are talking about a great stone. The reason we know that this actually happened is that 13 feet 2 inches to the left of the catch flange of that stone in the garden tomb. It has the slot, it has the catch flange. 13 feet 2 inches over to the left is the sheared off iron shaft that they put in there to block the stone so it couldn't be opened so by the design. So the stone design. was there, and then that chain there was over. So they put like a, a chain. probably a chain yeah. or a cord a with cord. a Roman seal of authority there. But that iron shaft that they put there to keep the stone from being rolled back and his disciples stealing the body is there today. Now, a few years ago, there was uh, some individuals who said they discovered Noah's Ark. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant, I should say. 
on Mount Nebo, which yes. is in Jordan, in the Judean. Well, this was proven to be a hoax. Uh, they said that two five by four foot objects were sitting flat on the floor in a chamber that was seven foot by seven foot by seven foot. Also by, uh, shall we say, enlarging the photograph that they supplied, the nail heads, tack heads that they used to build this thing they had a photograph of were the skid proof tops and they didn't have those in those days. So there are people out there to snooker folks and people do have to be skeptical. Of course there's been a great deal of speculation as to where the Ark of the Covenant was located. Some believe That's it's in correct. the vaults of the Vatican, some believe it's in Ethiopia, and some right. believe it's in heaven. And Right. And, uh, but you saw it with your very own eyes. That's correct, John. Now, uh, in the prophecy of Revelation, John saw the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. What a, the reader has to be aware of is that prophets saw things in the future, in the past, and if you check to see when he saw it, that was a future period of time. All right? So but that's I believe not there, a conflict. There, there could be an Ark of the Covenant in heaven, as the Bible says, uh, when he gave the directions to, Mo, uh, to Moses that the ark that he built and the tabernacle was a pattern of the things which were in heaven. Right. So you so, do it after the pattern so this shown could, you in yeah, the mouth. So, so, so this was a pattern that he made here on earth of what was in heaven. So right. it does, I mean, he could have seen it in heaven anyway, and still the one that was to be here on earth was simply a pattern of, of the one that was in heaven. That's well. correct. Now, uh, quickly, to just uh, give a, uh, a very quick uh, synopsis of what we have found. The city of Jerusalem was surrounded by a siege wall. Without divine intervention, the ark could not have been transported out of that area. And so it had to be hid under the city or somewhere they could get to without being seen from the siege wall. All right. Now, 600 years before Christ died, God directed Jeremiah or his friends, because Jeremiah may have been in the court of the prison in a pit, to hide the Ark of the Covenant in the place where Jeremiah lived, in the grotto of Jeremiah. We found the remains of fires that somebody used to cook over, maybe Jeremiah. But we excavated by permission again down the face of this escarpment below the cross holes in this, we actually broke into the cliff. It's a honeycomb of tunnels and chambers. We broke into one chamber, and in this chamber is a stone box containing the Ark of the Covenant. I drilled a hole through the stone box, took a fiber optic colonoscope, uh, which allows you to see uh, inside the human body. It can also allow you to see inside chambers that you can't get into in a cave or anywhere else. We use all of the latest scientific uh, equipment. For example, we use metal detectors here, as this slide shows, uh, in our excavation. Now, the remarkable part of this, we found this chamber to be right under the cross hole where Christ was crucified. At the time of the crucifixion, it says there was an earthquake and uh, that the rocks were rent. Now, a fault line or a crack in the stone right to the left of the cross hole occurred at this point in time when the centurion pierced Christ's spleen and the blood and water flowed out John it went down on through the crack on the mercy seat now here we're looking at some of our pails and stuff that we worked with in the hole that we had and to this go is through. right below the foot of the cross where yes. the blood would have flowed into onto the stone box that well, covered the mercy, the mercy seat, seat. Now the significance of this is revel, uh, rather Psalm 77:13 that says, "Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary." No, we're seeing. All right, th this is on the way into the chamber, and if you'll just keep rolling those slides, we'll. I don't want to miss the significance of this. This is on our way into the chamber. We broke through the escarpment. My son is sitting in our tunnel. I'm in the cave. Uh, the entrance that we went into. However, this is not the chamber that the Ark of the Covenant is in. 